In this video we're going to look at the most important set of tools that you'll need if you want to create repeating or symmetrical layouts. I'm deliberately going to use a single very simple component throughout this example in order to create all the different patterns. Really what we're going to focus on is how to use things like the mirroring, the rotational array and the linear array and how to use some of the tools we've got to construct our design so that when we apply those commands we know what we're going to get is going to provide us with these sort of attractive repeating patterns. Let's go ahead and begin this by starting a new copy of VCarve Pro. So we'll use VCarve Pro for this particular demonstration, although everything I'm going to show you could also be done in VCarve Desktop or indeed in Aspire. For this part we're going to create a new file. I'm going to make the width of this 24 inches, the height 8 and thickness we'll just make half an inch. We'll set the XY date and position in the centre and we'll leave the modelling resolution at very high and hit OK. Now if we go down to the modelling tab, I'm going to click on the icon here to import a 3D model and in the project folder you'll see there's a V3M file that we've created called C-Scroll. This is actually derived from an old Aspire tutorial example. I'm going to hit open. We'll see that appear in our 2D view there. You can also see it added to the component tree and if we click the page down key on the keyboard then we can uh, tile the windows horizontal. We could also do that from the view drop down there, tile windows horizontal. The easiest way to start creating repeating patterns with something is just to make a copy of it. So we can select the object here, click on it again to go into transform mode and if I hold down control to make a copy and shift to keep it in line and drag then we're able to make a second copy of that part there. In reality though, what I'm typically going to want to do is repeat this in quite regular ways. So really I need to know the distances between the part so that we can use the array tool to make multiple copies of the same object. So let's just take this one and delete it for a second and we'll size our component so we know exactly how big it is. So if we come to the drawing tab, click on the icon here to set selected object size with the anchor set in the centre and link XY checked, I'm going to type in a width of 4, hit apply and close. When we size a component though, it's important to understand that that includes the invisible pixel which is around our part and helps us to create the transparency that makes it so easy to work with multiple components in the software. As such, we sometimes may want to take that into account and effectively just size it by eye so that we know that when we make the repeats we're going to get the required overlap. For instance, if I wanted to make um, a set of repeating parts here that we're going to touch, at the moment if I was to take our object and say that I want to make five columns in X, one row in Y, and I want to offset this by four inches, let's just uncheck group there and hit copy, you can see that I actually create something with a very small space in between. Now that may be okay, in which case we could just work with that, or it may be that I actually want these to touch slightly. In that case, what I'll do is just undo what we did there with Control Z on the keyboard. I would draw a rectangle, and we'll just draw this in the center of the job, make it four inches wide, three inches high, hit create and close and then I'm just going to zoom in to the centre here. There you can see this little border that we have around the component. If we select the component now, click on it again to go into transform mode. I'm going to zoom in up the top here and I'm going to hold down the shift key so I can be sure that I'm scaling around the centre and then we can just stretch that component up until it touches the edge of our box. So that means we've just slightly oversized the component to some degree. Maybe let's just maximise the 2D view for a second and zoom in here. Make sure we've made that large enough to perhaps just overlap the edge there. So now I know if I was to do that same operation we did before, so let's just tile the windows again, select our component, come back to the linear array, make five copies with an offset of four, hit the copy button. Now they're all going to be touching because I've ensured that we've slightly um, enlarged that component there. 
So as with many of these types of operations, there's no right or wrong answer to which one you might want to do, it's just important to understand that that is something you may need to take account of, depending how you want your parts to be laid out. Now let's just hit F on the keyboard to fit all the objects in the window. I'm actually going to select our box that we created and delete that. And I'm just going to grab all these components and we'll hit F9 on the keyboard to centre them. Another very useful shortcut key when doing these types of layouts. Quite often you want to centre your objects in the middle of the screen. So now we may want to add some variation to our layout. One easy way to do that is to just flip every other object. So we can click to deselect, select the second component, hold shift down and select the fourth component. And then I just want to mirror those vertically. So if we come in and click on the icon here for mirror selected objects, lots of different options. In this case, I just want to flip the object. So we'll uncheck flip about job center, we'll uncheck create a mirrored copy, and I'm just going to click on the button to flip vertical. Now for the majority of the mirror commands, we have shortcut keys. So the shortcut key to do that operation would just be V for a vertical flip. H would be for a horizontal flip, which is the same as clicking this button. And then in order to activate some of these others, um, to flip about the job center, we'd hold shift down when um, also clicking on the H or the V key. And then if we wanted to create a mirrored copy, we'd hold control down as well. So control is the shortcut key for a create a mirrored copy. Shift to flip about the job center, then H for horizontal, V for vertical. And what I'll do throughout the rest of this video is use those shortcut keys. But it's important to know that they derive from this set of commands in the um, mirror form. Next, let's look at the technique we'd need to use if we wanted to create a set of these and repeat them, but have them touching each other. So let's just close the mirror command. What I'm going to do is just delete the first two here, and I'm going to delete the last one there. Then I'm just going to manually position this second one so that it's touching the first. So we'll just zoom in there, click on that again, again to go into transform mode hold shift down on the keyboard and just drag that over and the shift just keeps that in line um, as we drag it along the horizontal axis. So I'm just going to position that so I like the way it looks, the way that they're blending in with each other and these components are both set to merge. We can see that if we take a look in the component tree here which is why they blend nicely. Now in order to create an array of these I need to know what the distance between the middle of the part is and the middle of this one and then my array distance is going to be double that. So if I go ahead and select this object here and we come to the drawing tab and I click on the icon to move selected objects if I have the anchor set to the center and the type of move set to absolute the software is going to show me what that value is for the center of that object so it's telling me its X position is 3.6848. I'm going to right mouse click and go to copy value for that. Now I'm not actually going to move this, I just wanted to pick up that value. So now I'm going to hit close. Let's hit F in order to fit this in. And now I can select these objects, come down and click on the linear array option. And let's make five columns again. And this time my offset value is going to be um, the same value we just copied. So I'm going to right mouse click and go to paste. And I then need to multiply that by 2 because I've got two objects. So I'm going to put asterisk 2 and then hit the equals key on the keyboard to calculate what that value is. Now if we hit copy, we'll see it make an arrayed set of objects, each of which is touching just as those two are and repeating along nicely. I can hit F9 on the keyboard in order to center them and we could scale those up or down as well. So let's just undo that, just hit Control Z on the keyboard a couple of times and I'm going to go back and just delete so I've just got a single copy and let's look at another example that also makes use of that technique of finding out where the second object is positioned in order to use that value to create our set of arrays. Let's just look down the Z axis and hit F to fit up the top here. So next what I want to do is create a set of overlapping shapes so I'm going to select this, hit sh uh, 
click it again in order to go into transform mode let's just zoom in with the mouse wheel hold down shift and control on the keyboard and click and drag that and I want to position it so I've got this part here sitting in between the middle of the object and uh, the part that's mirrored up from it there as well so basically just with a little gap here and a small gap here as well now using the same technique as before we can just select the second object we can click on the icon for move and we can see its absolute position right mouse click copy that value and then go ahead and select both of these come back to the array tool and do exactly the same as we did before just paste that value in I can do that with control V asterisk for multiply 2 equals so we double the value of where the center point is there and then if we hit copy we'll see our array of parts again let's just hit close on there and hit F9 on the keyboard in order to center those let's hit F to fit so that looks alright, that's quite interesting uh, what we also might want to do at this point of time is again take every other one and flip these over now this time we probably don't want to flip it about the job center or about the center of the parts but more kind of somewhere around a region up the top here now maybe a good way to do that would be to move it down or we could put in a line, there's lots of different ways that we can adjust that so let's just grab all these click on it again, hold shift down again to keep them in line maybe come down and place it so that the middle of the part is roughly in the middle of each of the circular ends of those pieces so hold shift down and select every other one there and now if we mirror selected objects this time we want to flip about the job center we don't want to create a mirrored copy we can flip vertical and hit close there or as I mentioned before the other way of doing that would be flip about the job center hold shift down and then V on the keyboard for vertical so need to make sure we've got the objects selected shift V same operation that you can see there as well so that's just using the shortcut keys instead of those so again just another different layout by the way we've arrayed these and then copy them up like that now another way we might want to use these overlapping objects is to tilt one up so they appear to flow um, for one to sit on top of the one next to it so let's just go ahead and delete all but one of these again and select this one I'm going to hit F9 on the keyboard to center it once more and this time I'm going to create the tilt before we make the copy so with this object selected we can click on it we can click on it again and if we go in the 3D view we can click on the blue node in the middle here at the bottom to bring up the properties for that component we could also do that from the modeling tab by clicking on the uh, wrench icon there to bring up the properties too so a couple of different ways to do that now I'm going to click on tilt and click on the set button and I'm going to click from the right hand side and then click over to the left hand side so it's going to tilt from here up here and we'll enter a value of 5 degrees and hit the space bar and close and if we look maximize the 3D view and just look you can see how that object has been tilted up and now if we hold shift down and control click and drag to make a copy of that we should see that when we let go the part appears to overlap the one next to it so just by adding the tilt we're now creating quite a different effect than we had before when one was merging into the other let's just go back to tile the windows here look down the z-axis in the 3d view and then just come up here again just select these objects maybe and use the zoom selected box so again I've dragged this over so that it's got a bit of a space between the middle and this one again I would like to know where that's positioned so that I can get my array value so if we select it click on move go into right mouse click and copy the value from the center of the objects X position there now I can select both of these do our array and again what I'm going to do is control V to paste that value in asterisk 2 to multiply it by 2 
equals key to calculate the value there. We've still got five columns here, which in this case, because we've got two selected objects, will give us 10 copies. And if we close that and just hit F9 on the keyboard in order to center that in the middle of the part, and just double click in the background to deselect the objects. So there we've just got our overlapping uh, set of objects, the two objects we've created and we've done our array so now we've created this nice kind of effect of one part appearing to sit on top of the one next to it. Now let's take this one step further again now um, so I'm just going to hit Control Z on the keyboard a couple of times to go back to my uh, parts here. This time I'm going to delete that object, I'm going to zoom out slightly here, I'm going to select this one click on it again to go into transform mode and just hold shift down and I want to bring that down so that the sort of circular ends again are roughly in the middle here. Now what I'm going to do is use the shortcut control to make a copy, shift to go about the job center and V to go vertically up. So that in itself is quite an interesting shape with the tilt there that we might want to repeat in order to create a set of overlaps. The other thing we could do though is select that and hit H on the keyboard to horizontally mirror that there. So lots of different effects we can make just by using the Control shift v the H, the V, uh, the Shift-V, all these shortcuts with the mirroring in order to create symmetry within our part. So if we take these shapes now, hold Shift down and select them both, come back to the Linear Array tool and this time I would like to go half this value because I haven't made that copy that I've dragged over. So I'm just going to say divided by 2 and hit equals. Let's make 7 copies of this. Hit the copy button there and we should see the software will create that for us. If we just hit close there, F9 on the keyboard to center those shapes and just double click in the background to deselect them. And we'll see we've created quite an interesting effect of overlapping objects there. And we're still working with the same original um, C scroll that we imported in and we've derived all these different um, repeated um, patterns from. So all the repeats we've done so far have been based around the array and using the mirror tool, so essentially linear symmetry. What I want to do now is go through another set of um, layouts using rotational symmetry. Same shape so what we'll do here is just save this part, say file, save, and we'll just call this linear symmetry and hit save there. And now let's go ahead and create a new file and this time I'm going to make it 12 by 12, we'll keep all the other parameters the same, so working with the datum in the center, generally that makes it a bit easier when doing these types of layouts and we can hit OK. Now let's go back to the modeling tab, click on the icon to import a component and we'll reload our C scroll and hit open. Now let's come back to the drawing tab, we'll click on the icon here to tile the windows vertically so we have the 2D view on the left and the 3D view on the right. And then what I'm going to do is just click in the 2D view to make sure we've got the focus there. And another useful shortcut key that comes in handy when doing these types of layout is the 9 key. So that's a number 9 rather than F9. If we've got a select, an object selected and I hit 9 on the keyboard, it's going to rotate the object 45 degrees for me. And I can just keep doing that as many times as I want. And it'll just keep rotating about its center. So quite a useful way to just quickly move something 45 or 90 degrees. So we'll rotate that so it's facing to the right and then again with it selected I'm going to hold shift down while it's in transform mode and drag it up and I'm just going to position that roughly in the center of the top half of the model. So basically so there's a space between it and the middle of the part here. Now let's come over and click on circular array of copies. First I need to set my rotation center and I'm going to do that by typing in x0 and Y0. I want it to rotate about the center of the part here. That's going to be our rotational point of symmetry. 
Now there's a couple of ways I can specify my rotation. Um, I can specify the number of items and then I can either choose whether to do a total angle. So if I wanted three objects within a circular array, I'm going to put in a total angle of 360, number of items 3, and I'm going to hit copy. So there we've got a nice rotational symmetry of the three parts there. Now to achieve the same thing, if we hit Control z on the keyboard, I could have put a step angle of 120. So that's still going to give me three items. I'm going to have 120 degrees between each one, but that will add up to basically the same thing. So really it depends whether you're doing a full array within a circle or whether you're just filling part of it. If you're doing a full array within a circle, then normally you're going to select the total angle and type in 360 degrees. So let's just hit Control z again put that back to 360 total angle and copy. Now the other thing we can do is specify different numbers of objects. Depending on our layout, and we'll see later how to use the guidelines to help us with this, we may start to get an overlap then. So if I hit Control Z now and maybe change this to five items within 360 degrees, you can see we can get something quite different there if we just double click in order to deselect that. And if I hit Control Z again, we might want to take the same object and make 12 copies there. So lots and lots of different things that we can start to go, do just by changing the number of copies, entering in our center point here, and then using this circular array in order to create our rotational symmetry. Again, I'm just going to hit Control Z on that so we go back to a single copy of our C scroll and we'll just close the circular copy command for a moment. Now sometimes we may want to do a circular array where we know what the sort of angle of the circle is that we want our object to fit within. So let's say for instance we wanted to create six copies of our C scroll going around creating almost kind of a, an outline of a flower type shape. What I can do is use the guidelines or vectors if I prefer to help me draw a wedge of my circle so that I can get that to be the right size. So to do this with the guidelines I'm going to click on the ruler to the left and drag and snap one to the center. Click on the ruler at the top and drag and snap one to the center. Then I'm going to right mouse click, go to guidelines, insert angled and for the first one I'm going to enter an angle of 60 degrees and hit OK. Now by having this horizontal and vertical guideline I can now click on this one, drag it and make sure I get a nice snapping crosshair like you can see there showing that that's snapping to the intersection of those two guides. Now I can right mouse click, go to guides, insert angled, we'll type in 120 so that'll actually give us a total of a 60 degree wedge of our part so that's going to be to make six copies. Click on that again and just drag once more until I get the crosshairs. Very important that I see those crosshairs so I know it's snapping to the center. Now we can take our object here and I want to rotate this around so I'm going to hit 9 on the keyboard in order to rotate that 45 degrees so we'll just do that twice. Then I'm going to hit um, V on the keyboard and hit F9 in order to make sure that's in the center. Next we'll click on it again to go into transform mode, hold shift down and drag that up. What I want to do is get this so that it's just touching my guide. So I'm just going to hold shift down and then go onto the corner here and just scale that down. We may need to zoom in so we can go in a bit further. Again making sure I hold shift down so I'm scaling about its center then I can just zoom in there and whatever little bit I've got overlapping there is what should be touching when we do our circular array. So having used the guides to help us now we should be able to select that. We should be able to click on create a circular array. Make sure you set the rotation, rotation center back to 0, 0 so we can see that indicated there. And I want six copies 360 degrees and we can just hit the copy button there and we'll see how using those guidelines has helped us design that part so that we get it right first time. Now similar to what we showed before, if we just close that and hit Control Z to undo that, we could take the same object, hit V on the keyboard in order to create the vertical um, mirror and then just click and drag that down again so it's just touching 
on the guidelines. Same operation, make sure you set the rotation centre back to 0, 0 and copy that around there in order to create a different variation of that. Something else we could try if we hit Ctrl Z on the keyboard to undo that is to change the number of items. Maybe we'd like to try 9 and see how that looks. So that creates kind of an interesting looking overlap there. Or if we hold Ctrl Z down again, maybe we'd go to 12. So lots and lots of variations we can try with different values, different angles and different ways that we can use these objects in order to create new shapes. So let's just close that for a second and double click there so we can see how that's working. So as we did with the linear arrays we created earlier, we could also tilt this component before we array it around in a circle and do any of the other things that we showed you with the different mirroring options or the combinations of the tools that we've been looking at to create a different layout. This stage, let's just save a copy of this one. So it's in the project folder. We'll go up to File, Save As, and I'm going to call this Rotational Symmetry and hit Save there. And now what I'd like to do is create one last example which uses still the same simple component as we've been working through all the way and some similar techniques that we've looked at here but will allow us to create a kind of a pattern for a tile that may be repeated. Let's create a new file now. I'm going to set up exactly the same parameters we used before so 12 by 12 XY datum in the center and hit OK. Let's come to the modeling tab and we'll import the C scroll component again from the project folder here. Now I want to create some guidelines so I'm going to click and drag horizontal guideline from the top and then the vertical guideline I did first there from the side. Now again I'm going to right mouse click go to guidelines and insert angled and this time I want one at 45 degrees so I'm going to hit OK there and drag that so it snaps into the center and then back to the guidelines again, 135 degrees, hit OK and click and drag that and again making sure I get these crosshairs showing that that's snapping into the center there. So let's click on our component here, click on it again to go into the transform mode and hold shift down and just drag it up and again I'm just looking to make this so that it just touches those guidelines. Now as we did before, we could do rotational copies around the part here, but I want to show you another technique that can be quite useful as well. So as well as rotating this part around, we might just want to mirror it um, about a corner, or about a line rather. So if I go to the Drawing tab and I click Draw Polyline, what I could do is snap into the center here, snap into the top corner there, so that I know I've got that 45 degree line and then we can actually take our object shift and select the line there and I'm just going to switch off the guidelines for a moment so you can see this and come over and click on mirror selected objects and this time I want to uncheck flip about job center I want to create a mirrored copy and I'm going to click on the button to flip about line so what that's done is taken the object there and it's used this line as a mirror in order to create the copy. If we just hit uh, page up on the keyboard so we can tile the windows left and right you can see that in the 3D view there. So similar effect than we'd get if we um, did our rotational symmetry around here, in fact basically the same effect but just wanted to show you that a different technique that you might be able to use and again that doesn't have to be at 45 degrees, that could be a 60 degree line or a 30 degree line or something else that's going to help you construct the geometry that will make the copy that you're looking for. Something else which is useful um, that you can do in this situation where you want effectively a mirrored copy down in the other half of the job is to take the two objects like we've got here hold control shift and V down in order to create a mirrored copy and then hold down shift and H so it retains the original two objects being um, 
selected we mirrored them down making a copy which is why we had one sitting on top of the other here and then I've mirrored them about the center without making a copy so again I know that that's just created the mirror I'm looking for so first set control shift and then H or V and then for the second set just shift and then the other command you didn't use before so if you used H first then you'd use V the second time and vice versa so again just a slightly different way of laying these out we would have achieved the same thing by doing um, the circular array but it's good to understand some of these different techniques because they would be better applied in other situations now I want to take our components and I'm going to group them together to make it a bit easier to work with them. So if we just select and hold the shift key down, click on the grayscales from the 2D view, we can click on the icon here to group selected objects. Now I'm going to come to the modeling tab and we can see that group we've created there and there's the subcomponents for it. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to hit duplicate and then I'm just going to switch off one copy. Now I'm going to take this second copy that we've still got switched on here and I want to rotate this 45 degrees so I'm going to hit 9 on the keyboard to do that. So make sure you've got the focus in the 2D view in order for that shortcut key to work. And I want to move this up and over 6 inches. So I'm going to come to the drawing tab. I'm going to click on the move selected objects icon. I'm going to go relative to its current position, minus 6 in X, 6 in Y and hit apply and close and if we go back to the modeling tab and switch on the original one there you can see the shape we've created at this stage. Now if we zoom out in the 2D view you can see the additional components that we've got that currently don't sit within our modeling plane and we'll come back to that in a minute. This stage I want to make an array set of copies of these in order to build up all the components I want to make a sort of decorative tile pattern. So I'm going to select both groups of components, I'm going to go to the drawing tab, to click on create a linear array, I'm going to make three rows in Y, three rows in X, and the offset for these is going to be 12 inches and 12 inches. Remember we moved this one over six inches so I know in order to create the copies of these we're going to use an offset of 12. Now if we hit copy the software will take a moment to think, it's now having to deal with quite a few different components and then we'll see all of our copies being created within the 2D view there. Now let's close the array copy command, just click on the 2D view and hit F to fit and I'm just going to delete some of these that I don't need now so I'm going to take these three on the left and the two on the top here and I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard. I'm going to select all the rest of the components and then we'll just set the selected object size, keep link XY checked and we'll just set that to be 12, hit apply and close and then hit F9 in order to fit that in the center of our part and there you can see this nice repeating set of shapes that we've used in order to create this kind of tile pattern. So let's just hit F to fit in the 2D view there and we'll actually save this now, go to file save as and we'll just call that tile symmetry and hit the save button there so you have a copy of that in the project folder. So that almost brings us to the end of the video. Within this example what I've shown you is how we can take the same simple shape and then just using a particular set of tools within the software how we can create lots of different variations of repeating and symmetrical type parts. So hopefully now you'll have some good ideas for how you might be able to apply this to other types of shapes. Particular things to remember that we've looked at here are how we can use construction in order to help us to do our layout, so things like vectors or the guidelines. How we can use particular tools like the mirroring, the linear array and the circular array in order to make copies of our parts. And then also some of those nice little techniques we had to show you how to create the overlapping effect by tilting an object up and to find out what the distance we might want to use in the array tool is by um, looking at the location of something relative to the centre of the part if that's kind of one of our lines of symmetry. And that concludes this video.